Tohei Heiskira gets dumped in a public boarding school on Tamatsu Island after his mental problems become too much stress for his parents, who are tired of constantly moving. After getting there, he immediately traumatized the vice president of the student council and somehow managed to run into one of Dracula's descendants. Kohei had just moved back to Tamatsu Island in Shiomi City after constantly changing schools due to his tendency to cause mental distress to his mates. He had lived on the island for some time seven years ago. After getting directions to Shuchikan Academy, he met the vice president of the student council, Sendo Erika, who welcomed him but immediately became paralyzed with fear after barely touching him. She escaped the creep after another student, Hachimandaria Tsukasa, showed up. While she hid by a tree trying to understand what he did to her, Tsukasa got to know the newbie and took him to their school dorm. Before getting to their room, Kohei got knocked out by a petite female student who attacked him for trying to steal her salmon chips. On a closer look, the girl and her sister recognized him. Kanade was the midget snack owner's name, and her younger sister was Yuki Haruna. They knew each other as kids and played together before Kohei left. Kanade, who seemed to be the only one that skipped the growth phase, welcomed him. At night, he stayed at Tsukasa's room as his stuff got mixed up in transport, and the girls whose room was above his were having a loud tea party. The next day at lunch, the gang reunited, and Kohei revealed that the traumatized vice president was avoiding him. After scheduling a second tea party in his room, Kanade gave him a map of the school's landmarks. He was to visit each one and take a picture before the entrance ceremony. After he set out on his orientation, he ran into another pre-puberty student after catching her rabbit. Her name was Togi Shiro. She worked with the Laurel Ring, a council in charge of the chapel. After meeting Amik, the reverend sister and counselor, he left, remembering Tsukasa's warning of the sister being a frying pan spanker that dealt with boys that crossed into the female dorms. After telling Shiro where he was headed, she helped him find the directing student's building, which was also known as the Devil's Lair and headquarters of the student council. After sending Shiro away, another student interrogated the suspicious newbie. He was saved by Lori Chan, who came out to invite him for tea. Sendo Lori, a sixth-year student, was president of the student council and intentionally invited him to tease Erika, his little sister, who he claimed had fallen for Kohei. She immediately left when she saw the creep. The Quicksilver wannabe was Togi Saikiro, a sixth-year student as well and the student council treasurer. Later that night, Kohei the creep was done holding back his tendencies and barged in on Erika, who was getting out of the bath while having nothing covering her melons and rice cakes. Seeing his baby carrot increased the already brutal trauma she was enduring. She gave him a handprint tattoo across the face and left. After getting a disciplinary sticker from Kanade, he blamed his evil act on misplaced curtains. Tsukasa supported him as he heard Sendo talking about the curtains with Togi in the bath. He decided to apologize for his lack of control to the vice president who was eavesdropping and asked him to meet her at Hasaka Zelkova, a spot known as their local mistletoe, by 5 p.m. the next day. Later on, he went to the chapel for his orientation picture and saw a sendo who was apparently a vampire having a fresh warm drink from a female student's neck and froze in fear. Kohei was late to see Erika at the tree and found a note she had left him instead. The next day was the entrance ceremony. As all the students gathered around, Sendo, who was their local celebrity and was in his final year, took the stage to make a very short, cringe-filled speech that sent the undeveloped minds of his high school fans into a frenzy. Next up was his sister Erika, who captured the hearts of the boys and used her chance in the spotlight to publicly reveal Kohei the creep to the whole school. After being put on blast and exposed to the whole campus, Kohei went to his first class where the boys were more interested in knowing what he saw in the bath than the fact that he was ever in there to begin with. As they negotiated an information exchange, another student who clearly had no interest in being one of them walked in. Her name was Kyuz Kiraha. She merely came in to enjoy the view from her window, and Kohei watched her from behind, likely setting up mental plans for his next victim. Kohei spent the rest of the day unsuccessfully trying to apologize to Erika. At night, back at the dorm, Kane was selling botched toys left behind by past students to the male students who were practically brain dead. Amik came in, this time fully armed with her pan, and dispersed the fraudulent auction. Keeping up with their prior agreement, Kanade and Yuki snuck into his room for a tea party. Kanade collected the pictures of the school landmarks he took. Kohei had prepared something for the sisters but decided to hide it. The pictures were a trick Kanade used to make him do her work in preparing the student handbook. The next day, results for the mock exam were posted. Erika was on top of the class except in math, where Qs had come out on top again. Back in class, as he watched his next victim, 
He noticed Yukamaru, Shiro's rabbit, who had escaped again. After meeting her later, he left to find the rabbit while Shiro and Saikiro went to ask for help from the president and vice president, who were intrigued by Kohei's eagerness to help Shiro. Hughes, on the other hand, who liked being a lone wolf, didn't share the sentiment. Later on, while walking close to the field, he saw the vice president, but before he could reach her, he saw Yukamaru, who was about to be knocked out by an out-of-bounds ball. Before Erika could get to the rabbit, he jumped and saved it, bruising himself in the process. Erika tried shaking him again but got scared of the creep up close. Sendo cleaned a bit of his bruise but couldn't finish as the creep was scared of the president's zesty nature. The fact that he saw him gulping blood the other day definitely didn't help matters. Shiro finally reunited with Yukamaru. In the evening, Erika found him at a lounge and finally accepted his apology. Seeing his baby carrot made them even. She somehow also managed to properly welcome him with a handshake. Meanwhile, Sendo had used his blood sample from the wipe cloth earlier to run a test. He and Saikiro discovered that Kohei wasn't who they thought he was. Officially part of her creeper's friend group, Erika walked with them to school and got invited to a tea party. Kohei, on the other hand, was being sized up by her brother Sendo, who seemed to have found his next meal. In the cafeteria, after seeing that Kohei was too broke to get another type of dish, Yuki gave him a bit of her salad while Tsukasa swapped some of his food with his. While they ate, the whole cafeteria focused on Q's, the freeze-dry, who dumped a whole pack of powdered Carolina Reapers into her food and ate it like it was candy. At night, after seeing Kanade's sumo wrestling detective show, which reminded him of how she always had a screw loose growing up, Erika showed up for their tea party. At the end of the night, they decided to spend the weekend together in town. Their weekend was filled with the usual shopping and beach antics and ended with Erika warning him about her brother. Back at school the following week, Sendo, who was stalking Kohei, finally caught him in the locker room and asked him to come for a game at the council office after school. When he showed up at the office, Shiro served them tea and left after her brother Togi sent her away. Their game quickly took a turn when the president stabbed himself in the arm and immediately regenerated, reminding Kohei of his vampire status. After the imagination of his blood being drained almost sent him into a coma, Sendo revealed that he wasn't hungry and actually wanted Kohei to join the student council as he knew his vampire secret. The other option was to get his memory erased, like the girl at the chapel. Erika, who had come in worried about what her brother might do, was left to erase his memory after he decided that he preferred being a broke creep to being friends with the vampires that ran the school. At the beach, Erika had broken down in tears as she didn't want to erase her new friend's memory, and was upset that he wanted to forget about everything. After thinking hard about all his experiences with Kanade and Yuki, who were waiting for him back at the dorm, and all his new friends in the school that he had chosen of his own free will. He decided that having vampire friends wasn't so bad and ended up joining the student council body, which made Sendo and Togi very pleased. Kohei the creep started his day excited to be on the student council of bloodsuckers. At the office, Sendo gave him a crash course on their abilities. They had all the same typical vampire traits except they loved the sun and ate garlic for breakfast. Sendo was an aged vampire, while Erika was the same age as him and had a hot food weakness. The Sendos were the island's most prominent family. After the crash course, he asked Kohei to build rapport with Erika as their bath experience made them partners with no secrets causing his embarrassed sister to bash his face into a wall. After the vampire orientation, Lori took Kohei to class to introduce him as that year's lead organizer of the sports festival. The students were pissed that their idol wasn't handling it but accepted the newbie after he delivered a speech that Lori manipulated them into thinking was great. His new job kept him too busy to meet up with tea time as usual, but he made it work and had a late session with the gang who supported him. As they spoke about his new job, Yuki was particularly glad to help. He had written her letters that motivated her in the past, and she wanted to return the favor. While working on references in the council storeroom, he managed to make a stronger bond with his vampire bestie as they looked at old pictures of the never-aging Lori and former students. His experience as a repeat dropout gave him multiple activity ideas that he started planning out, even heading into town with Shiro to get sponsors from the local businesses, as none of the other students opted to follow after he shared the abnormal idea. Shiro was happy to go with him, as being outside wasn't something she was used to being a member of the Togi family. By the end of the festival preparations, he had become quite popular among the students who had forgotten his creep show activities, likely because the vamps made them forget. Lori and Saikiro watched his growth and felt satisfied with their choice of vampire butler. The sports festival kicked off with Kohei, 
whose 500 megabyte processing brain couldn't remember the elf. The first event was the girls' 100 meter race, where Qs came second and immediately left, playing her defeat off like it meant nothing. Next up was the 400 meter race, where Yumi placed second and Erika placed first. After securing her victory, she bulldozed Kohei, the commentator, for labeling her a wild horse. The rest of the day was filled with wild competitions deliberately set up by the now respected creep to get the most amazing views of the different classes of rice cakes and melons on campus, and the adults seemed to enjoy the event even more than the kids themselves. His assistants messed up the prizes and he came up with a prize redeeming coupon solution after begging the business owners from the town for more freebies. The creep show adults who were having a fun time watching sweaty kids happily agreed. During lunch, they all had too much to eat as Yumi had gone overboard with the food, even making Kohei's favorite, fried noodles. She wanted him fueled up for their three-legged race, an event that he came up with to get more physical interaction with the opposite gender. After revealing that he couldn't partake in his own event due to his role as the organizer, he played off the disappointment he felt. Qs, who noticed, mocked his fake good guy act and left. He followed her to a secluded spot where no one was and asked her to join the fun as he got called back to the tent. They resumed the event with a water balloon version of dodgeball. Canade was soaked in seconds and gave the boys an eyeful. She ran away in embarrassment, tagging the boys who were too focused on the protruding melons with stickers. Shiro, who was also getting pummeled, was saved by her brother in an unnecessary display of family love. Next up was the three-legged race. Seeing as his partner Yuki couldn't join after getting a sprain, they practically forced the loner Qs to do it with him. She reluctantly agreed and got her hair twisted by Yuki, who wanted to be her friend. As the race kicked off, he took off his passionate sportsman mask and told Qs that he was desperate for a win against Erika, who was leading again, pretending she was actually struggling despite being a vampire. After the first half, the girls changed, and Qs got into a cat costume that sent the crowd nuts. Erika got foiled by a giant duck costume, giving Kohei and Qs an edge in the end. The festival ended, and the satisfied adults of the town left, glad to have spent the whole day sponsoring and cheering on kids who wore swimsuits and ran around all day with their rice cakes and melons on full display. Lori was happy with the event and gave Kohei a key to his room for a personal appreciation gift later. His sister knocked him out again and told Kohei that the key was for the council office. Kohei left, telling her that he liked his new job. Kohei ran into Yuki outside in the hallway. She was setting up posters for the community service month. The vampire's decorated butler was surprised that Lori hadn't told him about the event, as the council was supposed to help out. As he helped Yuki carry the rest of the flyers, they were being stalked by Kanade, who was sure her sister was in love with Kohei. Six years ago, when Kohei told Yuki about his plans to leave due to his dad's job, they decided to keep in touch through letters. He was going through those letters when he caught Kanade spying on him and carried the midget stalker back to her sister. The following days, Yuki and Kohei started to notice an even weirder than usual behavior from Kanade. She was always putting too much effort into teasing them as a couple and trying too hard to set them up. At one point, Yuki thought her sister had become obsessed with Kohei and was also trying to do the same. It was the day of an event set up by the council to publicize the uniforms for the cleaning month. They still had not informed Kohei, and he soon figured out why. The president was using the nature of men to play mind games. They made cleaning costumes for the ladies that made them look like the type of maids that ended up stealing husbands. The plan was working, and the crowd got into the cleaning spirit. Seeing her sister on the stage, Kanade pulled Kohei to the front and was forcing them to get a couple's picture. As she hit her sister with the loving self-sacrificing quote, Yuki stormed off, pissed. After Kohei left all those years ago, Yuki got into an accident that conveniently erased memories of the year she spent with the creep. Feeling guilty about her little sister's accident, Kanade began dedicating herself to making Yuki happy at all costs. She assumed her sister and Kohei were in love, which was why she went overboard playing matchmaker. Kohei revealed that he and Kanade were merely close friends. After hearing both sides of the beefing sister's stories, he met with Kanade and explained how Yuki didn't like the fact that her sister was sacrificing her life to make her happy, which was why she wasn't speaking to her. He then took Kanade to meet Yuki at Hasaka Zelkova. The sisters expressed their true thoughts to each other. Yuki said that her weakness, which followed her from birth, made her jealous of her healthy sister. But after the accident, she didn't like seeing her once cheerful sister fully focused on making her happy while she remained a side character. Kanade felt bad for letting her sick sister get injured while she enjoyed herself and dedicated her time to making up for it by helping her. 
Kohei revealed that even after the accident, Yuki, who liked toxic creeps, still sent letters despite forgetting him, and they reconnected and made new memories. The trio, now reunited, remembered the wishes they made to Hasaka's alcova years ago, which was for Kohei to return to them. Erika had just put a shy nerd in his place after he took a chance with her. She had a rule against relationships, as those were human activities. She ran into Kohei, who played the classic hair trick with her as her brother watched. Later at the council office, Kohei found out that it was Erika's birthday, and left when he got a chance to get some brushes from the shops. Meanwhile, the girls were cleaning the pool ahead of their pool day and swim meet. Lori and Saikiro came and helped out as well. The president's main reason was to get his daily dose of fan affection, while Saikiro, who had a weird obsession with his sister, was there to protect and serve. After getting back to the office and working on the event planning with Erika, a sushi delivery came for him. After getting his package from Tsukasa, he gave it to Erika. He managed to order her a bouquet of flowers and had Tsukasa help him pick it up as he needed to be there to collect it that day. After giving the lonely vampire her very first birthday gift, she thanked him with tears in her cold eyes. Being immortal meant that they didn't celebrate birthdays, so getting the gift meant a lot to her. Back in her room later that day, while trying to find a spot for her gift, she got a series of heart attacks. After settling on combining the swim meet with the pool day, the whole school got into their swimsuits. Shiro, who was changing with the girls, forgot how to take off her shirt when the variety of fully developed melons around her made her feel bullied. The boys were more focused on Sister Amek, who was in her full holy attire on the one day she was supposed to display her holy attributes. The president, on the other hand, had no issue putting his model body on display for the girls, who went crazy for his sneak peeks until Erika knocked him into the water. Erika and Kohei, who was too distracted by the president's melons, were coordinating the event while Canade was the program announcer and kicked off their races and other events. She set up a special event towards the end. She gathered the male judo practicing students and set up a game where they had to hunt and capture the red hats the girls had on their heads. After unleashing the beasts, they immediately ravaged the girls, taking them out one by one until Kyuz and Shiro were left. They first surrounded the great freeze-dry, who was ready to take them all at once. They pounced on her, but she was too slippery and got away from them, seeing his little sister Shiro about to get defeated by a dozen beef sticks in the pool. Saikiro partially lost consciousness after seeing that she was too small to handle them. The boys backed down avoiding an early prison sentence. At the end of the day, the guys had their revenge on Amik by dumping her in the pool with her holy garments before leaving. Kohei and Erika were left to pack up. Kohei decided to race her. They didn't participate in the event as they had to coordinate it, so this was their chance to feel the water. As expected, the vampire beat Kohei and pulled him out of the water after he drenched his lungs. After getting out, they almost fell and held onto each other. Seizing the opportunity, Kohei came in for a sloppy session, but the president's heart attack started and she ran away from him. She went to her room where the pain and a desire for his blood intensified. She struggled to hold herself back breaking his flower gift in the process. Erika, who had slept off while fantasizing about Kohei's neck, woke up from a nightmare where she had sucked every ounce of fluid from him. Meanwhile, a student who had just finished her confession was heading out of the chapel when she saw a cloaked girl standing on the roof and forgot how to run away. The sister came out and found her on the ground while the witch had vanished. The next day, it became the daily scoop. Everyone was talking about the cloaked vampire from the chapel, and hearing about her kind was freaking Erika out. While boyfriends told their girls how they would abandon them if the vampire was real, Lori was acting like it was a regular activity. Erika couldn't understand why he was so unbothered by the rumors. He claimed that the best course of action was to uncover the truth and decide on a plan from there. Towards the end of the day, at the dorms, Canade had pulled out the divine weaponry. She had a full metal cross and the great garlic necklace ready to take on any blood-sucking vermin that could harm her precious Yuki. Kohei and the rest of the gang, who had just returned, met her, and Erika, who was already on edge, became more anxious. Lori, on the other hand, was as carefree as could be, even helping Kanade fuel her delusion with her farmer's market garlic necklace. The smell of the enchanted necklace was too strong for the mere mortal. The frying pan spanker showed up. She scolded the midget warrior who was supposed to be setting an example for the rest of the students and asked them all to head back inside. She assured the group that contained the school's vampire population that such creatures didn't exist. But there was a random girl that roamed campus at night. While Lori messed with the sister, he gave them a sign to prepare for a night patrol. At dusk, they took lamps and began the patrol. Erika was with Kohei. 
She revealed how lying to everyone about her true identity made her feel bad. As he cheered her up, she kept fighting her hunger for his blood. After finding nothing, they all gathered back outside the chapel where the cloaked vampire finally showed herself. After getting on the roof, she found out that the vampire was Q's. She was a dependent and claimed to be looking for her master. This was the reason she was traumatizing students at night. She ran off, and Erika chased after her. Kohei and Saikiro followed on foot. Yuki, who heard a sound, woke up. After seeing two super-fast figures run into the woods, she smartly decided to go out into the woods alone to look for the mysterious creatures she saw. After chasing the very agile cues, Erika couldn't keep up and fell to the ground, where she saw Yuki and made her pass out. After speaking to Lori about what had to be done, she went to erase Yuki's memory. She had brought her to the council building and was about to erase her memory when Kohei asked her not to. She revealed that she had actually erased Yuki's memory before. Six years ago, she was quite close to Yuki, and they played together. On the day of Yuki's accident, she had actually saved her from the collision and took away her memory. This was why she was missing a whole year and couldn't remember Kohei. After begging her to leave her memory intact, Erika refused and started the erasing procedure. Yuki woke up and thanked Erika for saving her back then. Erika did the spell, but to Kohei's surprise, she didn't erase the memories. Yuki remembered him and the time they spent together. Erika decided that she was done deceiving her friends and wanted them to know that she was their strongest predator, and a good friend at the same time. A couple of days had gone by. Hughes had not returned since that night, and Yuki was still recovering from the memory spells. While Kohei and Erika walked to school, they ran into Yuki and Kanade. The midget guardian angel stretched on her tiptoes, despite wearing heels, to hug Erika. She thanked her for saving Yuki from the accident and was happy she was their friend. As the gang got to school, they also saw Kyuz, who was back and as cold as ever, even refusing to speak with Lori and Saikiro. At the council office, after Saikiro reminded Shiro of her place in the kitchen, Lori told Erika to forget about the Q's issue, reminding her of a certain promise. Kohei, who had just come in, was assigned to be the lead organizer for the culture festival with Erika as his assistant. As usual, the rest of the gang offered their support and shared their ideas ahead of the festival, which was to happen after their summer break. Meanwhile, Saikiro went to meet the dreaded Freeze Dry and asked her to follow him to meet a certain someone. Erika and Kohei had gone to the shops to get supplies after Lori asked them to do so. While there, they met up with the local business to begin discussions about the culture festival. After shopping, they sat near the beach, where Kohei asked her about what exactly a dependent was. She explained that dependents were humans who entered into contracts with vampires by drinking their blood, which gave them vampire-like abilities, but also meant that they would become enslaved to the vampire's every wish. Meanwhile, Saikiro had just brought Qs to a foggy house where a lady who definitely had dwarf genes was waiting. The lady was Kaya, Erika's mother and Q's master. Hughes, who seemed to be in control of herself, gave the aged mini midget a slap and tried to leave after calling her crazy, but submitted to her master's will like a puppet once Kaya commanded her. Erika's mother was a cruel vampire who locked Erika away as a child for not being a proper vampire. The promise Lori spoke of earlier was a deal between mother and daughter for Erika to find a dependent before graduation or be forced to return to being caged. Kohei, who definitely didn't mind becoming a super strong second-rate Damon Salvatter, offered himself to be her dependent. But she refused. She didn't want him to lose his weak, pathetic life as a human and become a strong servant that could live forever. At the chapel, Lori was thinking when the sister came in. She asked him to head back as it was late, but he claimed there was nothing to worry about. Still referring to her as Shizuko, a name that seemed to belong to someone that looked like her. He left after passing a joke about how vampires craved the blood of the person they loved the most. After seeing Erika off after their shopping, she drank all the blood she had left in her fridge but had become even more thirsty and seemed to only want his blood. Students piled up outside the council building to submit their culture festival requests to the council and event organizers. After a long day of planning, Erika left with Kohei. She was still struggling with her thirst and was keeping herself occupied to distract herself from her desires. On her way back, she received a message from her mother, the mini midget. At their house, Kaya wanted to know why her daughter had not yet made Kohei her dependent. She already knew about him and wondered why Erika was fighting the inevitable. Despite reminding her of their agreement, Erika claimed that she didn't want to take human blood and didn't want Kaya dictating her life. She had decided to suffer the pain of the thirst for as long as necessary. The next day, Lori decided that he would give the committee a whole day off for them to do whatever they pleased, 
and Canade had already come up with an idea. After presenting what looked like a toddler's drawing book, she said they were going to spend the day at the beach playing games and watching fireworks at the end. They decided to do it at Tamatsu Island as Shiro and Saikiro had a dance to present as per their family's religious traditions. Before they went to the beach for the day off, Erika decided that she wouldn't take any of the blood transfusion packs as she was still obsessed with being weak and didn't want to take blood. At the beach, after changing into their bikinis, swimsuits, and trunks, they kicked the day off, swimming and playing a couple of sports. At the end of the day, Kohei, who was with Erika, tried to grab her and head back to the Tamatsu Shrine. After talking about the time they spent, she avoided his touch and ran off as her cravings were getting stronger. Lori, who noticed his sister's struggles, told Kohei about the painful effects of her delusion and asked him to watch out for her. As they went to the shrine, he asked her about it, but she played it off pretending to be fine. Once at the shrine, where the togas had finished their dance to the gods according to their family's religious traditions, they changed into yukatas and went to see the fireworks. After Lori intentionally shoved Kohei into Erika, her bloodlust became too unbearable, and she ran away, eventually collapsing on the grass where she struggled with her impulses. She wanted to be human. The idea of running at super speed, having super strength, and immortality was torture for her. Being weak and dying off made more sense to her, but the pain of avoiding her nature was becoming too much. After he found her on the floor, Kohei, who was definitely tired of being a weakling, grabbed her and refused to let go. Knowing her impulses were getting stronger, he pulled her in for a hug and shoved his neck into her mouth. She ultimately gave in and drank his blood. After waking up refreshed in her bed, Erika had conveniently forgotten about her blood-sucking escapades and felt good for resisting her urges. At the office, she was enthusiastically back to work, planning the festival and other related activities. After Kohei walked in, she went to help him with his baggage. Once she came close to him, she collapsed, filled with her urges again, and remembered what had actually happened the night before. Her mood had an instant swing, and she tried turning to work again for a distraction. Kohei later met up with Yuki and Kanade. After explaining his disappearing act from the previous night to them, they started discussing plans for the after party. After their talk, he went back to find the vice president but couldn't see her anywhere. Ultimately, he went back to work setting things up for the festival and started seeing less of Erika. In her room, she was trying to quench her thirst with normal blood, but it wasn't working. She only craved Kohei's blood and couldn't stop her urges anymore. In the following days, he stopped seeing her at all and became swamped with work in the council and in school with the students that helped him set up. At night, while she fought her painful desires, Kyuz came to deliver a message from her mum. She was demanding that Erika return home as she had refused to make Kohei a dependent even after taking in his blood refusing to hold up her end of the promise. Erika revealed that her mum had been playing a centuries-long game with Qs. She erased her memory of being her dependent and sent her away to spend decades and centuries finding her, only to erase it again and restart the cycle in a sick, deluded style of hide and seek. This was why she was climbing chapel rooftops earlier and had slapped Kaya when she eventually saw her. Hughes left after delivering the message, which was basically Kaya asking her why she refused to drink the blood that was freely offered to her. The next day, after having a discussion with Kanade and Yuki and finally coming up with a brilliant idea, Kohei went to tell Erika, but couldn't find her again. She was hiding from him in the council office and came out after he left. Her urges were at the point where she collapsed on the table at the thought of him. Seeing as Kohei was human, at that level of craving, if she tried to drink from him, he could die. Lori suggested finding another person to use as a dependent, but seeing as Kohei's blood was special, it couldn't be a random person. Shiro decided to offer herself to stop Erika's pain. This pissed off Saikiro, who grabbed Lori by the neck. He became humbled when Lori, who turned out to be his master, commanded him to stop. Erika, still fixated on her dream of perpetual weakness, was still headstrong on finding her own way. Later that night, she collapsed outside Kohei's room, accepting defeat to her urges. Erika had voluntarily gone back home. She didn't want to live off Kohei's blood and went to put herself back in her cage. This decision made Kaya, the mini midget, extremely disappointed in her. Back at school, Kohei woke up and saw the mini parachute she left outside his room. He went to the council room to find her. When he asked them about her, Shiro explained all that had happened the previous night, and Lori told him that she had left and wasn't coming back. Lori pulled him away to the chapel. Once there, he told him that she had chosen to leave as the suffering of her thirst had become too much. He told Kohei that if he wanted her back, he had to be the one to do something about it. 
The rest of the students were busy with the festival preparations and kept asking him about the vice president. Kanade and Yumi decided to set up another tea party later that night after running into the stressed out Kohei, who had started to hallucinate and thought Yuki was Erika. At the tea party, he told them that Erika wasn't coming back anymore, as they were initially expecting her as well. They told him to go get her back as she had become very important to their friend group and the students in the school. Meanwhile, at the Sendo house, Kyuz went to summon Erika for Kaya. After deciding to get Erika back, he met Lori and Saikiro at the gates, and they took him to the Sendo house. Once there, he met Kaya, who was happy to see her daughter's dependent had come to offer himself once again. Kohei claimed that he didn't want to become a dependent, he simply wanted to bring Erika back to school. He basically told the thousand-year-old vampire that her teenage daughter, who literally needed blood to live as a vampire, shouldn't be forced to do the one thing that vampires do. Kaya, who was fed up, threw him into the air with a mere comment. The four-feet vampire got up and grabbed his neck, about to show him how weak he truly was, when Erika showed up. She flung Kohei at her and asked her to make him a dependent. Unsurprisingly, she refused and asked Kohei to leave. He refused and asked her to come with him. The idea was for her to suffer through her urges while being in school, instead of suffering through them with her toxic midget mother. Seeing as the idea wasn't so bad, she agreed and stood up to her mother while Lori watched with Saikiro, proud of his sister for carving out her own path. After waiting all night outside the dorm, Kanade, Yuki, and Tsukasa were glad to finally see Erika back at school. They went on to have the festival after the summer break and focused on enjoying the time they had left until graduation. 